I've dealt with some strange, obtuse, overly long or outright clumsy game names, but out of that whole list, including such classics as Demetrios, VGA Civil War Strategy, The Preposterous Awesomeness of Everything and Projector Face, I have never before come across a name as difficult to remember as Midnight at the Celestial Palace Chapter 1. No idea why, but I've forgotten this one innumerable times since I've started playing the game. Probably from the very moment the developer sent me a free code, in fact. I got a free copy of the game from the developers is what I'm saying. Anyway, it's not a stupid name, it's a perfectly parsable sentence, it's not even that long a name, but for some reason everything before chapter 1 fell out of my brain 5 seconds after it entered. Seriously, this has never been such a big problem before. For far too long I had to remember it as the musical game. You heard correctly by the way, this game is advertised as a musical. Now, songs in video games are nothing new, even in the comparatively small kingdom of pointy clicks. They're played over the credits, like Girl in the Tower from King's Quest VI, or more recently I Will Be There from Resonance. They can also appear in-game, like the skeleton song from Monkey Island 2, or the opera scene from Gabriel Knight to The Beast Within. But I haven't seen a point and click game explicitly advertised as a musical before. This, however, is doing me three concerns. One, despite being labelled as interactive songs, I was worried I'd be mostly sitting there instead of, you know, doing anything. Two, the songs might be there not to advance the plot, but for the mere sake of being songs. And three, the songs might be crap. But rather than give you a verdict on those right away, we'll talk about the story first, because I ain't breaking my formula today. There's a framing device in the form of a grandpa telling a story, but it only shows up at the beginning and the end of the game, so it's more like a bookending device. The story he tells is of a magic dream world filled with comically obvious stereotypes, except for this twist. A tale of a hero unlike any scene. What the hell? I don't remember posing for this. Turns out our hero Greg is a bit of a slob in the same way I enjoy the occasional pizza. That said, he's looking damn good for somebody approaching 40. Better than I'm gonna look in a few years if I keep up this pizza habit. Greg sorts himself a ketchup sandwich, i.e. the snack of my formless nightmares, and goes to bed. The, the couch. Until a mysterious presence invades the room and transforms into a well-dressed otter. He who Greg then hits with a tennis racket because home invasion. Aww. The otter in question is Sir Squiggles. Hailing from the land of Dreamania, which, thanks to the Simpsons, I'm probably going to pronounce as Germania at some point. Dreamania is in need of a champion. The waking realm is where champions are taken from to combat great perils, evils and such like. And Greg is asked to answer this call. To save fair Dreamania from a most certain doom. No. Sir Squiggles gets upset about failing his princess in a suitably heart-melting way, causing Greg to acquiesce slightly and ask about this Dreamania place. Sir Squiggles answers him with our first song of the game. Now, the interactive part of interactive songs is accurate. In this case, Sir Squiggles will sing a verse and then you pick a line of dialogue which will shape Greg's verse in the Mass Effect dialogue choice sort of way. Not the exact words, but a rough idea. I even went back to check if picking a different line would change the verse, and indeed it did. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Sir Squiggles' voice actor doesn't sound like a professional singer. Then again, singing as an otter is probably much harder than it looks. There's three songs in this here chapter one, four if you count the one played over the credits, and five if you count the less than a minute long coffee shop performance, but neither of those are interactive. I didn't find any of them particularly mind-blowing, although I did catch myself singing Come to Dreamania for bloody days afterwards. Thanks for that, guys. And with one of the numbers, we have a problem that has already cropped up in non-musical dialogue trees. That being when the interactive part falls to bits because you have to select every choice to progress anyway. So the songs aren't particularly special, interactivity basically ends with choose a verse with no consequences after that, and there was five songs in the three and a half hours I played. That's perhaps pushing the definition of musical a bit, but when there's so few games with interactive songs in them, you can probably get away with it. Hell, Curse of Monkey Island is the only one I can think of. Tell me all the ones I've missed in the comments, by the way. No, really, I actually want to know, that's a list we need to have. If the songs are charming enough for you, then that's fine. For everyone else, too bad, because they can't be skipped. Normally you can skip dialogue on a per line basis, and to be fair I don't even know how you'd implement that for the musical numbers, but you can't skip them at all. So if you're pretty sure those won't be your jam, there's no real way around it. You probably want to pass on this game. For those not frightened off at this point, the songs do remain somewhat relevant to the plot, apart from maybe the one where the pirates sing about their love of coffee. I don't think I need to explain that one any further, let's move on. I want to talk about the graphics for a second, despite the fact you can see exactly how good the graphics are, that's what video does. 
When a point and click game adopts a retro style, it tends to be this pixelated VGA-esque look, albeit with more than 256 colours. Midnight at the Celestial Palace is much closer to an SVGA look, higher resolution but still with visible pixels. It's a look I very much love, and one that got me through 1996's Fable and... Uh, whatever this is, couldn't name it myself. But the art style in this game reminds me, of all things, of Mavis Beacon teaches typing for kids. I think it's the solid colour fills that do it. When a game artist got an expanded colour palette to play with, there was a tendency to fill areas with a gradient instead of simply picking a better colour. Either way, these graphics are plenty enough to set off my SVGA boner. I know, but I have a problem. Sadly, Midnight at the Celestial Palace also seems to have the same level of animation as Mavis Beacon. An embarrassing thought, because one of those games was shipped on floppy disks and one wasn't. It's enough to carry the game, and what cycles obviously get more attention than the incidental animations, but I can't help but notice it. Okay, with all the unusual stuff now out of the way, I can get to judging this as a point and click game. You've got a two button interface, left click to do, right click to look, with pop out inventory and it lets you double click to warp through scene exits. Good stuff. There's even a keyboard shortcut for the inventory, bonus points, which are taken away because you can't select dialogue options with the number keys. It's like a video player where hitting the spacebar doesn't pause the video, why would you even? One more while I'm on the negatives, you'll want to stand away from whatever you're trying to use an item on because your cursor changes to the item you're using and that makes it difficult to line up with the target if anything else is in the way. I think the hotspot is in the middle, you see. Apart from that, I actually consider this to be a fairly well-designed adventure game. Moon Logic has taken a holiday elsewhere with puzzles that make sense and don't even force you down to a certain order to solve them. Did you place an item down but forgot to use another item on it first? Go ahead and use the item anyway, the game will work around it for you. Instead of an explicit hint system, they moved all the nudging and prodding into dialogue. It's usually what a sidekick is for in adventure games, but it reminded me of all the times in Stasis and Kane where I would have liked a hint or any kind of reaction to what I just attempted. Here I almost heard as many nearly but not quite responses as I did generic nope ones. All of them neat, tidy, never overt, always helpful. No problems with solving a multi-stage puzzle out of order either. It can be very tempting to lock those down into a straight path, but this definitely feels like the better way. Although I swear I've put termites onto a wooden hand somewhere before. Nah, probably nothing. One more before I get to the conclusion. You know the old joke where your classic adventure game protagonist can apparently take anything they want without consequence? It's kind of different here. A lot of your item acquisitions are justified in some way, like explicitly pointing out that no one is paying attention or being outright begged to take an item off someone's hands. It's pretty much mere lampshading, but it amused me nonetheless. In my first ever video review, I pointed out that a game cannot solely rely on one new feature to succeed, especially not in a genre as old and practiced as adventure games. Regardless of whether or not your fancy unique malarkey works or not, it will all be for nothing if you screw up the fundamentals. So whilst I wasn't keen on the interactive musical portions, I did like the rest of the game. It's got a good sense of humour, I really liked the art style, and sometimes it's just nice to sit down and appreciate a well-crafted game. With a singing otter wearing a hat, we've all been there. As you might have guessed, the chapter 1 part of the title means the game will end with unfinished business to deal with, and I hope to see chapter 2 in the future. If not for getting more interactive musicals out there, then for a developer that started out doing it right. First and foremost, they made a solid adventure game. With an unavoidable feature which might not be enjoyed by everyone, that's about the only thing I would change. Really, just let us press escape and skip the song. Keep up the good work though, and I will see you again for whenever chapter 2 comes out.